We've all been there, starting up Blender for the first time and being overwhelmed by learning a brand new program. For me, that was eight years ago, but I'm here to tell you, do not worry, it's gonna be all right. Let's look at five things I really wish I had known about Blender when I was first starting. Positioning the camera is very important to get the exact frame you want. Instead of treating the camera like an object inside a Blender, we can actually summon our inner gamer and fly around the scene. So in order to do this in Blender, let's just go into the camera view. And then if you actually come up here to view, and then go down to navigation you can come all the way down to this walk navigation and if you select that you can move around with your mouse now and then if you hit WASD it'll actually move the camera around and then if you hold shift it'll go faster so uh, just a very easy way to position your camera inside a blender and it'll save you a ton of time trying to position the camera For some reason, I didn't find out about HDRIs until later in my career, and I feel like it's something that not a lot of beginner tutorials go over. High Dynamic Range Images, or HDRI for short, are images with multiple layers of exposure values that basically give us a wide range of light data in a 360 field of view. In other words, it's an image that can give us lighting and reflection data in our scene. It's basically free lighting and reflection, so as a beginner, it will help you focus your attention in more important things. So in order to use HRIs inside a Blender, I just have a really simple scene here. You want to make sure that first you are on Cycles, since it doesn't really work in Eevee. Then you can come down to the World tab, and we want to hit this yellow dot, and then click Environment Texture. And then all we have to do is just go ahead and open a HRI image. So just select whichever HRI you want to use and then open the image. And now if we hold Z and go up to the rendered view, you can now see that we have an HRI in our background. We have the sun over here, we have shadows, and then we actually have reflections in our scene. If for whatever reason you don't want to see this and you actually want to see the transparent background, you can always come up here to the render properties, come down to film, and then make sure that transparent is checked. And now we have lighting and reflections already in our scene without any work. You can actually find a lot of free HRIs over on Polyhaven to match whatever lighting you want in your scene. Since we're on the topic of Polyhaven, they also have a texture section which you can download a bunch of free textures as well. This might be really intimidating as a newcomer, but materials are actually much easier than you might think. So to apply our materials inside of Blender, first thing that we need to do is make sure we have the Node Wrangler add-on. So edit preferences and go to add-ons. We just want to type in node and make sure this is checked. Let's exit out of that. And now we can go to the shading tab. I'm just going to set it back to rendered up here and then we want to select our object we want our texture we can add a new material and then with our texture selected and the node wrangler add-on installed we can hold Control shift t and that'll open up a new folder so once you've navigated to the textures that you downloaded you just want to select all the textures here and then hit the principal texture setup so what that's done is basically created a whole new node setup with the principled BSDF taking all of the textures of our materials and then plugging those into the correct slots in our principled BSDF. And now with that I'm going to go ahead and shift A add a value node just so we can uniformly scale the material so I'm going to plug that into there and then we can just move around this slider and now we have a very detailed material inside a blender with very little effort. I cannot tell you how many times I was first rendering shots in Blender that I had the program crash on me or I accidentally stopped the render halfway through. When you are rendering a MOV or a MP4 file and Blender decides to crash, your video file might get corrupted and all of your progress might be lost. That can be really annoying, especially if you have a low-end PC like I did. We can avoid this by rendering as an image sequence instead. Don't worry, you can always combine the images back into a video file after, but since each frame is being rendered individually into their own image file, if Blender decides to crash, the worst that could ever happen is one image file being corrupted instead of everything. In that case, you can just reboot Blender and set a new start frame and continue like nothing ever happened. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Now for more of a learning tip. If this is the start of your Blender journey, it's going to take a long time until you're able to get good results on your own. Now I do highly recommend that you watch as many tutorials and guides that you can in order to help you learn the program. A mistake I made early on and what really made Blender challenging for me was not focusing on why. And what I mean by this is to not just follow step by step with the tutorials and get a result that's cookie cutter exactly what everybody else gets. If you don't fully understand why the person teaching you clicks a certain button, 
or why they're able to go from one step to the other, then your mind totally skips over the learning process and when it comes time for you to make your own shot without anybody there to help, you can't remember what to do. Being able to link why certain things function inside of Blender will lead you to be able to be more self-sufficient and have a greater understanding of the program. There was a moment in my learning where I went from pretty much just recreating tutorial after tutorial to actually making my own shots and using tutorials if I got stuck. It wasn't until then where I started noticing exponential growth, and now I can comfortably problem solve since I know why everything works instead of how to do it. Hopefully this video has helped, and if you want to continue learning, I have many other videos that dive into Blender, so it would mean a lot for me if you considered subscribing. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next video.